Hi, this is the final video in the playlist where we're looking at quadratic sequences. If you're not sure about how to do this, please do have a look at some of the earlier videos just with uh, simpler numbers so it can give you a little bit of an idea of what we're actually going to be doing here. OK, so the first thing is, is that I have to kind of determine that it's a quadratic sequence. Well, the reason I'm going to do that is if I look at the common difference, uh, if I've got sort of uh, minus eight, 2, 16 and 34. The common difference between this and this, or the difference between this and this is going to be positive 10. And then I've got positive 14 and then I've got positive 18. OK, well, and therefore, it's not an arithmetic sequence. What we have to do is we have to look at the second difference in order to figure out how we can write this in the quadratic form, which is an squared plus bn plus c. So the second difference with this is going to be plus 4. OK, well, that's going to work for me because there's a little bit of information I can take from this. The first thing is, is that plus four is the equivalent to 2a. So we can say 2a is plus four and you just kind of need to remember these formulas I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk about. So the first one is 2a is the second difference. Well, in that case, if 2a is four, then a must be two. OK, positive two. Let's have a look at the next one. So I've got plus 10 and the formula is 3a plus b equals plus 10. OK, so let's just work that out. I've got 3a plus b equals 10. So I know that a is 2, so I can say 3 times 2 plus b equals 10. So that's going to be 6 plus b equals 10 okay and if i minus 6 from both sides i'm going to get in this particular case that b equals 4 so my second value is positive 4 okay my final formula i need to remember is this first number here and that's a plus b plus c equals minus 8 so let's have a look at that so i'm going to write a plus b plus c equals minus 8. OK, well, I know my value of a is going to be 2. I know my value of b is going to be 4 plus c is minus 8. OK, so I've got 6 plus c minus 8. If I take 6 from both sides, it means c is going to be minus 14. OK, so now I've got minus 14 as my value. So it means I can put everything together in the quadratic form and I can say that the nth term is going to be 2n squared plus 4n minus 14 and that would be the answer to this particular question. OK, let's have a look now at part B of this. Now, this is where it just gets a little bit tricky because we're going to be needing to do some factorization. So what was asked is to find the term that has the value 272. So in other words, this equation has to equal 272. And then what we're being asked to do is to find the value of n. So it's going to be 2n squared plus 4n minus 14 equals 272. And then basically our job is to solve that and find the value of n. OK, so in order to find the value of n, what I'm going to do first is uh, all of the numbers are even numbers. So I'm going to divide everything through by two, because if I divide it all through by two, it just might make my life a little bit easier. OK, because the numbers will be a little bit smaller, hopefully, to deal with. Now, in order to factorise... I need to make it equal to zero. So I have to take this 136 and move it over towards the left hand side. In other words, I've got to subtract 136 from both sides. So I'm going to get n squared plus 2n minus 7 minus 136 is minus 143 equals zero. OK, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky because we need to be able to factorise it. 
Okay, now, one of the things about this is it has to be a whole number. Okay, this is, it, you could, I get, well, you certainly could use the quadratic formula, but this should factorise to whole numbers because we're being told it has a term, it has a place where the value is going to be 272. So it's not going to be 3.14159 or 7.28. It actually has to be the value of n has to be a whole number. So it depends really on how you work with arithmetic here. What I would say is, well, I've got 143. Now, what I do need from that is two numbers that when I multiply them together make 143, and when I add them together make positive 2. Okay, well, the two numbers, it's actually minus, are going to be... 13 and minus 11. Sorry, it's minus 143. So 13 and minus 11, because when I multiply those two together, I get minus 143. And when I add them together, I'm going to get positive two. Now that's just generally arithmetic. But I think it is important to kind of figure on this that factorizing it is gonna give you a single number term. OK, so however you do it, whether you do it by quadratic formula or completing the square or this uh, this way, way of doing it is perfectly fine, doesn't really matter. But it allows me to write this as n plus 13 multiplied by n minus 11 equals zero. So in other words, I've got two values of n. My first value of n is where n equals positive 11. And my second value of n is where n equals minus 13. OK, so what is my value of n going to be in terms of this equation? Well, it's actually going to be this one because I can't have a minus 13th term. I can only have, in this particular case, the 11th term. So therefore, the term that has the value of 272 is the 11th term. OK, all right. So a bit of a tricky one to end on there, but it is the way a lot of these exam questions are going is that they're starting to kind of develop exam questions where once you've got that, you're going to take this and then you're going to prove something else as well using a slightly different skill. OK, I hope it's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Subscribe to the channel. Have a look at the other videos within this particular playlist. And I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.